Hello friends, Miss Castine has another holiday story for us to listen to. On Monday, we do not have school because it, it is a holiday. It is Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was a man who believed that everybody should love everyone, that everyone should be friends with everybody. It doesn't matter how a person looks, how a person acts, okay? Everyone should care and love for each other. We should all be friends. We all care and help each other. And Dr. Martin Luther King was a man who believed very strongly in that. He believed that we all should just get along, okay? So in this story titled, a Picture Book of Martin Luther King Jr. by David A. Adler and illustrated by Robert Casilla. So this is a story that's going to give us information about Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. A Picture Book of Martin Luther King Jr. Martin Luther King Jr. was one of America's great leaders. He was a powerful speaker and he spoke out against laws which or rules which kept black people out of many schools and jobs. That's not fair. He led protests and marches demanding fair laws for all people. So a long time ago, friends, because their skin was dark, they were not allowed to go to the same school as children who had a different colored skin as them. That's not being fair. That's not being caring friends. So he said, we need to make a change. Everybody needs to go to school together. Martin Luther King Jr. was born on January 15th, 1929. Hey, that is today's date. Today is Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday. Happy birthday. He was born in Atlanta, Georgia. Martin's father was a pastor. He worked in a church. His mother had been a teacher. Martin had an older sister, Willie Christine, and a younger brother, Alfred Daniel. Young Martin liked to play baseball, football, and basketball. He liked to ride his bicycle and to sing. He often sang in his father's church. Martin and his brother, Alfred Daniel, and his sister, Willie Christine. Young Martin played in his backyard with his friends. One day he was told that two of his friends would no longer play with him because they were white and he was black. So his friends couldn't play football with him anymore because they had a different colored skin. That's not fair. Martin cried. He didn't understand why the color of his skin should matter to anyone. Martin's mother told him that many years ago, black people were brought in chains to America and sold as slaves, people who worked for no money. She told him that long before Martin had, was born, the slaves had been set free. However, there were still some people who did not treat black people fairly. How do you think that's making him feel? Very sad. In Atlanta, where Martin lived, and elsewhere in the United States, there were white-only signs. Black people were not allowed in some parks, pools, hotels, restaurants, and even schools. Blacks were kept out of many jobs. Wow, that is so sad. Martin learned to read at home before he was old enough to start school. All through his childhood, he read books about black leaders. Frederick Douglass, Harriet Tubman, George Washington Carver. Martin was a good student. He finished high school two years early and was just 15 when he entered Morehouse College in Atlanta. Wow, he was very smart. At college, Martin decided to become a minister. After Martin was graduated from Morehouse from his college, he studied for a doctorate at Boston University. So he became a doctor. While he was there, he met Coretta Scott. She was studying music. 
they fell in love and got married. In 1954, Martin Luther King Jr. began his first job as a pastor in Montgomery, Alabama. The next year, Rosa Parks, a black woman, was arrested in Montgomery. She was locked up by the police. She had been sitting just behind the white only section on a bus when all the seats in that section were taken. The driver told her to get up so a white man could have her seat. Rosa Parks refused. She said, no, there are no more seats for me to sit down in, so I'm going to sit down. And the bus driver said, no, you have to get up because a white person wants to sit down. That's not being fair at all. That wasn't nice. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. led a protest. He had a whole bunch of people come and talk about how, ni how not nice that was. Blacks throughout the city refused to ride the buses. They did not want to ride the bus anymore. Dr. King said, there comes a time when people get tired of being kicked about. They don't like to be pushed around anymore and told what to do if it's not being fair. So they're speaking up. They're saying, this is not fair. One night, while Dr. King was at a meeting, someone threw a bomb into his house. <gasps> That's very dangerous. They were trying to hurt him. Martin's followers were angry. They wanted to fight. But Martin told them to go home peacefully, that we do not fight. We must love our white brothers, he said. We must feel hate with love. He said, no matter how much they don't like us, we must show that we still love them and that we are caring people. The bus protest lasted almost a year. When it ended, there were no more white only sections on the buses. So not everyone could sit where they want to sit. Dr. King decided to move back to Atlanta in 1960. There he continued to lead peaceful protest groups where people didn't fight against white only waiting rooms, lunch counters, and bathrooms. He led many marches for freedom, for people to do as they please in a fair way. In 1963, Dr. King led the biggest march of all the March on Washington. More than 200,000 black and white people followed him. I have a dream, he said in a speech. I have a dream that my four children will, all, will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. So he says, don't judge me because I have a different skin color than you. Judge me if I'm a bad person or if I am a good person. That's when you should be fair. The next year in 1964, Dr. King was awarded one of the greatest honors any man can win, the Nobel Peace Prize. He got a big award for all of his help. The country was changing. New laws were passed. Blacks could go to the same schools as whites. They could go to the same stores, restaurants, and hotels. White-only signs were against the law, so this could not be hung up anymore. Everybody was welcomed everywhere. Dr. King told his followers to protest peacefully, to not fight. But there were some riots and some violence. So there were times where they did fight sometimes. Then in April, 1968, Dr. King went to Memphis, Tennessee. He planned to march so black and white garbage workers would get the same pay. They would get the same amount of money for the same work that all people do. On April 4th in Memphis, Dr. King stood outside his motel room. Another man, James Earl Ray, was hiding nearby. Then he hurt Mr. Dr. King and an hour later Dr. King was dead. He was hurt. Someone hurt him and he's no longer alive. 
Martin Luther King Jr. dreamed of a world of free hate. There is no more hate and prejudice and violence. He didn't like that people judged each other and he didn't like when people fight. Carved on the stone which marks his grave are the words, I'm free at last. So no one can judge him now. Dr. Martin Luther King was such a wonderful man who changed this country for the better. He made sure that everybody was able to work and play fairly, that children all had the same education, that children were all able to go into their schools and play together. So on Monday, we will celebrate Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and all the good that he's done for people. Okay, that's why we won't have school because it's a holiday. We're celebrating him. Till next time, friends. Bye.